Here's a drawing of a two-story home framing. You can see the lower walls and the upper walls. The wall we're going to focus on today is going to be this particular wall here and a problem that someone emailed me about and uh, thought it would make a good good video. So what do you do if you have a bearing wall, whether it's a two-story wall or uh, it would be a wall that would be sitting on top of a wood frame floor, not a concrete slab. And there is no support under the wall. This right here would require a doubler, a double joist, uh, and it would require one actually even if it was a non-bearing wall. So all framing members that run, all walls that run parallel to the joist will uh, in the, in this direction here will require a double joist underneath it so um, i'm going to remove the plywood here to give you a better idea the floor sheeting you can see there is no support under the wall except for the plywood itself that's it if you have a situation like this where you do not have a doubler and you're starting to have problems and you're not going to have this all the time i've seen it plenty of times where you have a wood frame floor and the wall is, is is something like this where it's in the center of the span in between the joists and there's never a problem but every once in a while you are going to have a problem let's put the sheeting back in there and go underneath take a look at what we're looking at I removed the blocks this is something you would need to do remove the block on each side because in order to put the new double joists in um, you are going to need to be able to slide the joist in to this side because remember this is the outside is going to be finished with stucco or siding you're not going to be able to get to get it through the outside now if you do have a problem where you can't slide it through then um, you could always remove a section of the exterior of the home and or the building and slide the joist in that way if that was if, if you needed to but if you can try to get the joist in and slide it in to the other side uh, where you don't have anything in the way but you could you could have plumbing pipes in the way electrical heating ducts and uh, this could be a nightmare trust me now here's the doubler went ahead and put it in underneath the wall and I'm, I'm going to try and make another video to go into a little more detail on how to actually install something like this it's not uh, it's not like I said always going to be easy but uh, you never know you could look you could luck out and again this is a side view you will need to put the blocks in after you install the doubler uh, recut the block and uh, block this area here and the same on the other side so this area will need to be blocked now here's the scenario from the individual who emailed me they actually have a pipe plumbing pipe running in the in between the joists and this is going to make it a little more difficult to actually put your truss joist in but I'm going to provide you with a couple of options in our first example you will simply cut the pipe so that you can install the floor joist doubler and cutting the pipe in the right spot is going to be uh, something that's that you're going to have to try and pre-plan it's a lot easier to cut the pipe and then realize ah, I cut it in the wrong spot and then cut it again but uh, don't cut the pipe if you haven't figured out how you're going to put all this stuff back together that's not going to be easy now here is the doubler installed to make sure that you drill the holes or cut the holes out for the pipe before you put the doubler in because you might not be able to cut it out it might be difficult to even get a something in there to cut it out so that would be a bonus tip there make sure everything is cut and uh, will line up that would be I guess your second bonus tip now getting the pipe back in here and using the couplings this could be uh, a nightmare so you might actually need to remove a section of the pipe back here further in order to slide a pipe into here and you might need 
three or four couplings. You might need, uh, and if it's uh, plastic ABS or PVC, you can get the couplings. And uh, you know, if you have to use one in every bay, then you'll have to use one in every every bay. And and I don't think there's a problem with that as far as the building code is. But uh, you would need to check that out uh, yourself. Remember, I'm just giving you some advice here on things that I've seen, either seen done in the past or done myself as a repair. Here is method number two. This would not require installing another doubler. You have too many pipes in the way, in the way, or it's going to be too difficult to do. This right here might be the path that you would do. And I would imagine this would be what most people would do. But you again, you would need to check with the product manufacturer the people who make the engineered truss joists to make sure you can actually do something like this. This is real common with conventional lumber. Regular 2x10s, 2x12, something like that. And a lot of times they don't need any hangers. They just nail them uh, on the side. But you wouldn't really be able to do that with these because they don't have enough um, wood to nail into. Most of these um, of the webs here, the plywood or the oriented strand board that's used is less than a half inch thick. It's not going to give you much support. So it, they do require a piece of plywood or I, I, I'm sure engineered lumber. Again, you would need to check with them. Some actually require conventional lumber, a regular two by six, a regular two by eight. And they do require them to be tight. They need to fit the web stiffeners here or the plywood um, spacers, whatever they would be. Heck, uh, well, I don't know why they wouldn't be a spacer. Let's go with web stiffener. Okay, I like that one. These pieces would uh, actually need to be, they require them to be tight fitting. So if you have a gap between the bottom cord uh, top cord and the bottom cord and it's nine inches they want it to be nine inches it didn't require an eighth of an inch gap for expansion or anything so I don't know if that could be a problem later doesn't make any sense to me I would rather see like to see a um, gap in there but who knows I'm not the product manufacturer the reason for them not um, maybe one of the reasons they don't want a gap in here is because they're actually going to use the tight um, plywood that you fit you fit in here as something to stiffen the top and bottom cords which would make sense and I hope that makes sense to you if not leave a question in the comment area and I will try to elaborate on it uh, again it, oh and they want it on both sides I should mention they want the uh, and you can always go in if you're if the manufacturer of your truss joist is warehouser then go to their website, type in um, Trust Joyce Installation Instructions, Installation Manual, and um, get the, all the information there. This is actually where I went. I went to one of these uh, lumber companies and read their, in, their information, and their information product information might not be the same as someone else's so make sure that that is crystal clear in this video I don't want you doing something and remember these are only suggestions I can't state that enough a structural engineer might require something different I'm just throwing this out there if you use it you will be using it at your own risk so keep that in mind last thing I want to do is have somebody tell me I told them to do something and uh, and uh, didn't fly so this again is something that uh, a lumber manufacturer one of the companies recommended but uh, if you're dealing with a large load you're doing a remodel for example and you need to install a you need to install a doubler underneath in the existing floor and the structural engineer does not provide you with a method and you watch this video and you think hey this will do you're making a mistake contact a structural engineer um, for verification on anything you do 
to a building, if you're remodeling it, if you're making modifications. If you're making a repair, you can simply put it back together. If the truss joists are damaged, you can put it back together to its original specifications as long as other parts of the building have not been modified. So I hope that uh, makes sense. I hope this makes sense. These are a few methods uh, or a few fixes that uh, I have done in the past and uh, might be helpful. So that's why I made the video. And again, this was a question a response to a question that someone emailed me and uh, I hope, hope this helps you out.